The Princeton Township Board did not have any issue with the Princeton Fire Chief working with the Princeton Township businesses or churches as they asked. Uh, and then they had a fire department who's going to need a new tender looking to spend approximately 150000 to 175, which was in, within its budget. And then under the new business, um, it was Mr. Wilhelm moved to authorize the purchase and Mr. Hiller seconded. That's all I had. Those directions? Any other directions? Additions? Deletions? Any entertain a motion to accept with those additions? Is there any other discussion on the, on the minutes? If not, we can entertain a motion to accept. So moved. That was. Mr. Hiller, is there a second? I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion on the motion to accept the June 16th regular meeting minutes with those additions? Me? Wait, I'm sorry to hear it. Hold on, I'm looking at the wrong minutes here, Bob. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. Clerk Treasurer report. We have a cash control statement. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, basically our cash control statement. We went from the beginning balance of June 1st of six hundred twenty-eight thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. Our total per bank statement at the end of the month was five hundred ninety-three thousand, and that included some paying or. Um, fire fund and twenty five thousand to bridge. The only question I have, uh, just for verification, <coughs> Mr. Whitcomb, the has construction the last item of thirty four thousand is that gravel? I don't have it in front of me. I don't believe it was for gravel. That was forty-four thousand dollars, and it's marked as grading and packing. I was going to question that one. Okay, and the claims list has got three checks. Yeah. And this is on, on my list. It says un unpaved streets three times. Yep. We got uh, back on whatever right here. We got forty-four thousand dollars going to past construction. It says grader and packer. We are in the process of getting the, our uh, CTAS numbers in order. And this may be something that we can look at. But it was for gravel. Most of, a uh, majority of it was gravel. Okay. But there was greater impact in there also. Any other questions about the uh, cash control statement? I got email about that. Not. I need a motion to accept the cash control statement. I move that motion. Motion's been made to accept the cash control statement. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded to accept the cash control statement. Is there any further discussion? Any questions? Are we going to look into that uh, thirty-four thousand six hundred thirteen dollars and seventy cent check that was written up to them to verify that that was gravel? So we got all our ducks in a row. Yeah, we, yeah, I don't know what, we've done some adjusting on some of those. We've, been trying, we've created a, a, um, a series of called program codes where we're differentiating some of those. The, the big categories are paved roads and unpaved roads. And then under that, there are other categories that we're creating. And uh, I know we said some, we had, some that came in with, uh, well, for example, the, the Haas one. We had material, or was it, no, the Dahlheimer one. We had material and we had contract labor yeah. that we have separated those into. So various types of material. We've got gravel, we've got... Uh, Passion. 
Yeah, bituminous mix. Mm -hmm. And then we've got uh, different, different codes like that. So we're trying to differentiate more closely. I'm not getting too picky, but uh, that it gets you know tedious. But we're trying to we're trying to differentiate those various items like that. And this would be one that you know, we should we'll take a look at and see. But we've we've gone back and recategorized re uh, some of the things that are just lumped into big sections before based on what had been done previously. So we're trying to just break it out a little more accurately, a little more descriptively. And it's, you know, it's a work in process, but uh, that's so what we're trying to do with that. You're still entering numbers into the CPAS on that? I'm sorry, what? You're still entering numbers, you're still entering Yeah, stuff we're still the adding different categories to it. But we have, we came up with about five of them, I think, that we yeah. broke it down into. Because we didn't have, there were no categories under program codes. We've been adding them in. You know, we started with elections, and then we've done some other things with roads and computer uh, um, technical support, stuff like that, so to, to break it down a little bit. Um, out of the larger categories, so we can get a little, little more descriptive picture of where the money is actually going. Just the where money is that either the, the invoice would be available in the packet. Pardon me. The invoice would be available. Yeah, I have the invoice. Okay. Is there any further discussion on uh, gas control statements? <coughs> if not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of accepting cash control statement, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion is carried. <clears throat> June payroll. Two different forms, net pay, account distribution, and the payroll register in front of us. Um, is there any discussion, questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion to accept the June payroll. Motion to accept. Motion has been made to accept. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to accept the June payroll. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, no. Motion is carried. We will accept the June payroll. <coughs> Claims for approval is next. I guess we already covered that one sort of with the, with the gravel bill. <coughs> Anything else that jumps out? Question? If not, I'd entertain a motion to accept the claims for approval. Move to accept the claims. Motion has been made to accept the claims. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made to accept the claims for approval. Is there any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. Doug, can we get them in our packets? Is it, when you're mailing out our packets, is it too early to get those added to our packets so I don't have to look at the claims? Phone? Yeah. Yeah, well, they keep coming. Okay. I and mean, I did send out. Uh, I just forgot to print them. So. But, uh, you know, some additional ones come in. And I don't like to delay those <laughs> because when we get we get past the due date, then we get dinged in the audit. So. Fair enough. Um, I do have one other item that I didn't put on there. Um, we are in the process of producing the newsletter, the annual newsletter, and I'm going to need some stamps for that. So I wanted to see if we could get an authorization to buy a thousand stamps. be $550. And I could just put them on a credit card. <laughs> so. We had a motion to pay $550 for stamps. Yeah. I would move that motion. Motion has been made to distribute $500 to $550 for 
for Bridges and Stamps. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been seconded. Is there any further discussion? There's no further discussion. We'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion is carried. Application for special use permit. Nice and Columbus Car Show, Mr. Fiala. Hi. <coughs> My name is Doug Fiala uh, with Nice Columbus. I do uh, <coughs> apply for the uh, permit to uh, have the car show like we did last year out on that's uh, Thompson uh, Concrete property out there. Uh, we'll be setting up on Thursday. There will be a one day event on Friday and be tore down by Sunday night. We had a good turnout last year. I expect the same this year. Again, follow the state's guidelines for this COVID 19. Is there a chili contest? Also? <laughs> but, no, no, no chili. We got no chili. barbecue. Uh, barbecue. We got chicken rib barbecue competition, a car show, and a slot meet. Okay. Any questions? Just a suggestion, you might want to talk with Amy next door here, figure out where they went wrong with their car show. Yeah, I so heard that. The videos don't get pinched. Well, see, this ours is all outside, and I'm just, I mean, I've talked to her, but I'm assuming it happened probably inside because of <coughs> the closeness or whatever. But so, uh, whatever the state decides to do, you know, I mean, they can shut us down tomorrow or the day before or whatever, but uh, yeah, there was quite a few of them that got hit. I'll do that. Thank you. And the date is? 15th of August. And the application was put in about two weeks ago, so we have plenty of lead time. Any discussion, questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion to uh, approve the application for special use permit. So motion has been made by Mr. Miller. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Lowell. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of granting an application for special use permit to the Nice of Columbus, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion is carried. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Zoning Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the first item that we have on our agenda, uh, we have, as you can see, a busy planning commission agenda, and it's uh, now in front of you. Uh, Kimberly Hayes of Elf and Omega Pizza Farm uh, is the first one. I uh, has made a, a request for a conditional use permit for an event venue. It's at 6714 uh, Elf Road. Uh, they're looking at uh, uh, hosting events at their farm with, with pizza night. Yoga, graduations, weddings, celebrations of life, uh, church picnics, etc. Okay. Uh, the pizza farm is located on 10 acres um, and uh, the property is zoned rural residential. Planning Commission looked at it at their July 6th meeting and recommended the uh, uh, application with the conditions you see in your report. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, the Hayes had a, a previous conditional use permit uh, that had been approved, um, uh, but that is so expired, so they're coming through again for a, a, a renewal of that under the new event uh, uh, venue uh, allowances within the zoning ordinance. So they're adequate for parking. Uh, they have an emergency and medical plan. We'll uh, provide, they'll provide some more details. Uh, portable restroom facilities that would be permitted and that, and that they're seasonal to uh, do the portable restrooms. Uh, talk to, to Ted, Todd Geske about that, and he did not have an issue with it. Um, if there's any concern with noise, uh, any of the neighbors have concerns, again, if, if that's reported, we will, uh, uh, we have the ability in the conditional use permit to, uh, to take action if, uh, if noise becomes an issue. The criteria reviewed by the Planning Commission, uh, really no issues, uh, but there is a list of, um, of uh, 17 conditions that uh, were recommended by the Planning Commission. Uh, within your packet, you also received a resolution uh, that will be signed uh, that, uh, that uh, backs up those uh, conditions uh, with uh, with our, your approval. So, with that, any questions that you might have? The Hayes are here tonight. If you have any questions, was there anything significant that changed from the last? Yeah. From last and what is goat yoga? <laughs> um, it's yoga outside, and we put food on your yoga mat so the goats come around. Okay. People love it. 
Do they ever stack on the people doing I've never yet? seen that. <laughs> we have fainters at our house. So they don't they don't like to stack. Yeah. They faint. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is a question I asked when you were first getting it. Is there any conflict between serving food and having animals in the vicinity? Not per the health department. No, we're following all okay. of the health department guidelines and we're working with them to um, authorize, we have a, a food trailer there and we're working through that process so that we're able to legally serve food uh, per the health department. We just uh, put in a new well uh, and it's a community well so it follows all of the guidelines for um, well and we'll also follow the same guidelines for the septic for the food trailer. Mm -hmm. And this is just to approve, basically to approve a conditional use permit that's already in existence, I believe. Oh, mm -hmm. it's good. No, mm -hmm. the motion. motion has been made to approve. Uh, pardon? Uh, Thomas. There's a second? Second. John seconds the motion. Is there any further discussion? Any questions? <coughs> no, we we put you through a lot more than this first thing. <laughs> Is there any further, further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of granting the conditional use permit to help an Omega Pizza Farm signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion is carried. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I might have to go see the go-yoga. We're all invited <laughs> next session. That's the TMK Properties uh, has made application for a preliminary plat. Uh, it's located south of County Road 135, uh, which is 70th Street, uh, between 80th Avenue and the Red River. Uh, Property is within Section 3. Uh, with access from 67th Street and County Road 135. Um, the subdivision consists of five lots uh, for, with a total of 96 acres. Three of the lots will directly access the County Road and then two others on 67th Street. There is one existing property uh, that is uh, off of uh, 67th and uh, which is a township road uh, and it had, had, has been platted. The uh, property is guided for uh, river conservation uh, in the comp plan and zone uh, RC2, River Conservation 2. Uh, you've seen the, the uh, sketch plan uh, for this uh, at your May 4th meeting, uh, or excuse me, your, your May 19th meeting, and there's no really no issues raised with the proposed subdivision. The uh, Planning Commission also on July 6th uh, uh, recommended approval of the preliminary plan for this. Again, pretty straightforward. Um, uh, the issue, uh, you know, the main issue with 67th Street, uh, there may be some additional or excess right of way uh, as part of that that would need to be vacated uh, down the road. Um, but uh, it is recommended by the uh, town engineer that uh, uh, only that portion of the uh, 67th Street be graded um, and developed as a, a township road uh, section uh, with gravel. Uh, and uh, there would be a hammerhead at the end, not a cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sacs are not allowed in that river conservation district. So that's uh, outlined pretty well in the uh, uh, in, in the recommendations. And uh, again, you have a resolution in front of you that that covers the, uh, the issues and the, uh, and the conditions of approval. Any questions on this one? Hey, I don't see anything in here that would is requesting the township to abandon. The extension beyond the we would do that as part of the, the final plat. Okay. Yeah. Well, I do have number five, the easterly portion of 67th Street, beyond the cul de sac right away shall be vacated. Oh, okay. But we'll have, yeah. there'll be additional details as part of the final plat. In fact, we should probably do that vacation uh, at the same time as the final plat. So the town board will see that. Any questions? Discussion? Questions of Mr. Richards? If not, I entertain a motion to pass the resolution uh, granting the approval of the, of the TMK properties uh, preliminary plan. 
I would move that motion. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second that. Motion has been made and seconded to grant, grant the preliminary plan for Woods Bush Subdivision GMK properties um, with the resolution on uh, page two and three. Is there any further discussion? There is no further discussion. We will proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Next one, Mr. Chair, is uh, Student Baker Acres, a preliminary plat uh, for that. Again, you've uh, seen the sketch plan at your June 1st meeting. Um, it's a, essentially a simple lot split uh, in section 26 at 6588 Alpine Road. Uh, both subdivisions consist of two lots. On 16.88 acres. Uh, properties guided for rural residential and zoned rural residential district. Um, planning Commission again on their July 6 uh, recommended approval of this. Uh, two lots, one lot one, 10 acres, uh, uh, slightly over 10 acres, lot two, 6.29 acres, uh, both with uh, adequate frontage. Um, and uh, again, we recommend approval. Uh, really, no controversy here. It's essentially uh, Mr. Studebaker creating a, a second lot uh, for sale on Silver Lake. Uh, there, again, there's a resolution uh, that would uh, approve the preliminary plat. Next one, Mr. Chair. A motion to accept a sketch plan for Kirk Studebaker Two Law Subdivision. Yeah, the, the agenda says sketch plan, but it should should have said preliminary plan. Sorry. Okay, preliminary plan. The resolution says preliminary plan. Okay. <clears throat> I approve that motion. The motion has been made to accept the preliminary plan for first two acres in our subdivision. Is there a second? I'll second that. And the motion has been made and seconded to Accept a preliminary plan for Kirkwood Lake or two lot subdivisions. Is there any further discussion, questions? <coughs> if not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of accepting the preliminary plan for Kirkwood Lake or two lot subdivisions, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, say no. Motion's carried. Preliminary plan for lumber. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, the, uh, Jamie and Tanya Lundberg uh, have made application on this for both the sketch plan and preliminary plat. Essentially, they're redrawing the lot lines. It's a subdivision consisting of two lots, a uh, total of 19.95 acres. Uh, the lots directly access Pound Road 13 and 60th Street. Um, currently, the property is two lots, each of which is approximately 10 acres. The preliminary plat shows moving the lot lines such that lot one will be 2.5 acres and lot two 15.73 acres. Uh, applicants would sell the smaller lot and build a new house on lot two, um, and then right away would be dedicated for County Road 13. Property is guided uh, as egg conservation and also zoned AC egg conservation district. Uh, Planning Commission recommend this after July 6th uh, meeting also. Again, pretty straightforward, just redrawing the lot lines. Uh, seems like uh, a lot of process just to do a, uh, uh, a uh, redrawing the lot lines with the uh, look at the subdivision ordinance that the Planning Commission is doing right now will make these processes a lot easier for people and not take them through all this. The subdivision ordinance is a little vague as, as far as processes on some of this, but hopefully by September we should have that uh, wrapped up. And there's a, a resolution within your packet also. Uh, the list of conditions for the uh, approval of this plan. The resolution is on page two. I guess it's the second part. Any discussion? To accept a preliminary plan for Lumber Farm sub and two lot subdivision. So moved. And that was Mr. Whitcomb. Yes. And is there a second? I second that. Motion.
motion has been made and seconded to grant the uh, approve the following preliminary plan for Lumberg Farm Food Law Subdivision. <coughs> Is, are there any questions? Any questions? Discussion? Comments? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of granting a uh, preliminary plan for Lumberg Farm Tool Lot Subdivision, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, say no. Motion is carried. Uh, the next one, Mr. Chair, as we're going through our list, uh, we have a sketch plan for uh, Scott uh, Muller Subdivision. Uh, it's in section 27 on County Road 1, 75th Avenue. Uh, this is a uh, situation in that the proposed subdivision is on 26.9 acres and consists of 17 lots. Uh, the property is zoned uh, R2 district on the west side and rural residential district on the east. Uh, the lots are proposed at 1.25 <coughs> acres in size, consistent with the R1 uh, residential district zoning. Um, in order for this to proceed though, uh, and again we're just in sketch plan, the comprehensive plan would need to be revised and the property rezoned to R1 residential district. Currently, there's no other properties. Um, this is on, um, you know, the essentially the opposite side of the city uh, from where the areas that we currently have uh, an R1 district. But in looking at this, and there's some background information in your packet, um, you know, I don't know what the original intent was with some of those subdivisions uh, in the past, but uh, uh, we have uh, the preserve at Princeton, Spruce Haven Estates, the Den High Estates. Um, Appears that a lot of those lots were developed at R1 standards, uh, but I don't see a history of them ever being zoned R1. Uh, so I don't know if it, one time I know the township had a, a PUD ordinance. Maybe they're done by planning and development. Again, I haven't dived into the full history of it, uh, but I have done a little bit of checking on things. So essentially, what the planning commission is is asking for is what uh, Scott and, and Elvin are asking for is that uh, the planning commission take a quick look at this in terms of does it make sense. Um, with this area, this uh, 26 acres, as well as the areas around it, uh, to uh, do an amendment to the comprehensive plan and to the zoning and make those lots consistent with really the way they're developed and then allow for this particular subdivision. So it's, it's a discussion item uh, on your part to say, yes, planning commission, go ahead and take a look at this, make a recommendation to us. Uh, on, you know, maybe they'll say no. We should uh, not develop this. It should just remain as uh, as uh, R two district and rural residential. Or yes, maybe this should become R one, and maybe those other subdivisions become uh, R one district. So we're they're just looking for authorization uh, from the town board uh, to have that to look at. Wasn't there also questions on how long that bed and the call to site road was? Yes, and there was a discussion at least with the design of the uh, of the uh, subdivision. Uh, as to the length of that, that would exceed the allowances by quite a bit. It was like three, quite four hundred foot. Yeah, it was. And we've asked the uh, uh, developers to look and see if there's any alternatives to that. Unfortunately, the the lots around that area, um, uh, you know, have been developed to the great extent, so you can't push out across. Uh, I guess we saw the property. You can go to the north, but I don't think the the property owner to the north has any interest in. And, and subdividing or at least following right away through there. So they, they would need to take a look at it. There is an L lot B um, uh, in the preserve at, at Princeton. And if there's an opportunity there, I don't know. But but mm -hmm. something again, there's two I guess there's two issues. There's design issues with this, but they don't get anywhere with design until until we figured out the contents of plan and zone. So the Den High estates, they're, they're all on one and a quarter lots or one and a half lots? From what I can tell, a lot of them are. But right now we're sold two and a half per lot, just on part of it. Exactly. So why wouldn't we go through and make these two and a half lots? To make the existing... Oh, oh, to make this flat into two and a half lots versus they could keep with current standards, not just because, well, the neighbor built a fence. We're going to build a fence so it looks like his. Well, and that's the type of guidance I'm looking from for you guys. I mean, and they're here tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they could they could uh, do a, a subdivision and do two and a half acre lots, yeah, uh, but sure. it does require them to build a road. Um, 
and they're saying the cost of the road doesn't justify the, uh, the number of lots that we have. Is there something back where at the Planning Commission where you guys were talking about changing your minimum road frontage or to have it back at the building setback? Would that uh, help them yeah, out? Yeah, that's going to help them out. Again, it's, they need to have a minimum lot size. So min minimum lot sizes they're looking at is, you know, any current board. Mr. Richards, I know um, one of the things that you had on that first page was just the even direction from the board on um, just confusion. I'm looking at one, two, three, three or four different zoning maps, and these don't even match the latest one that I have from from Laux. Laux's map shows. I mean, I I think it'd be a good idea that we actually find out what this is officially zoned as. Yeah. So this you know? particular one, there's some older zoning maps. Um, I've got one from 19 that doesn't look like any of these. Right. Well, this should be the the, the most recent one. <coughs> The very last page. It's and then you should oh, have it's the last page one. Oh, okay. Okay. okay this one. Oh, okay. I'll assume we start with that one. <coughs> See, his doesn't look like these. Were you were you here when uh, uh, only one of the like that you all those lots and then I there were like seven. Yeah, so I'm look like this. Um, this is all 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 right. Right. That's what I have. I have the That's what I have. And we, 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 we got the major in my two lines. Yeah, that's not in our packets. Then allow the one point two five. It's right there. And, and it was, yeah, I pulled it out the back sheet. So, so what you're saying, Mr. Chair, is that in the past, uh, you have require them to do the 2.5 acres in accordance with the zoning ordinance. Most of the Dan High development was done before the zoning. Right, right. And that's what I find. The, the vacant lots that were left were, were sub, substandard <coughs> lots, and we, uh, I thought that was less than a year ago, but it must have been over yeah, a year ago. I've been here since about July or so. Right, yep. Last year. But, but we, we required, I think there was the one that, she only had one single lot. I believe that one we maybe gave a variance, but the other ones we made her combine two lots into one lot. Okay. So I guess what we're looking from uh, the Planning Commission and myself, looking for some direction as well as the applicants, um, is there, you know, some appetite to look at this as an R1 um, zoning, or should they stick with the current uh, um, R2 uh, rural residential standards? I almost say R2 because it's surrounded by R2. As far as zoning, correct. Yeah. But the lots don't necessarily match the zoning, but but they are legal zoning. <clears throat> but everything around it is smaller. So the preserve, they're what? What are they? They're one and a half acre lots? Again, there's a mixture out there, and again, I haven't looked at every single lot and looked at their lot sizes, but uh, you look at them and some of them are. A lot of them are one acre lots, and they might even smaller. <clears throat> Can I put my uh, two cents in? I'm here on behalf of all the owners on 76th Street, the lots that you guys are talking about, and he wants to use our actual street to run 17 more homes behind us, which will increase the card by 50 to 70 cars a day, when he easily has an access off of County Road 1, there's no reason to use our township 76th Avenue at all. I, we are not against development, understanding, but he needs to use the access of County Road 1 that is already there with the driveway already in place. There's no reason for him to literally blow open our cul-de-sac and now increase our traffic threefold from what is already there. There's a reason our property value is so high because we aren't on a cul-de-sac. So it's going to diminish our property values on top of him building 17 more homes behind us. We already have another 17 homes built on the other side of us. So as far as every property owner on 76 right now that either joins it or buffs it, we are against using 76 Avenue. And that's one of the things the Planning Commission suggested too is they go straight off the county road and not off the uh, 70 and 76. Again, it may shorten up that the cul-de-sac plan also to it. Yeah, yeah, we're we're just all against doing that. Every owner, every house owner today has been on fire because of this using our street for a development that has no reason when they can just use one 
on one where it belongs. So Thank I you. Just to let you know. Could you give us your name? And my name is Simon, please. Sure. Any thoughts from the town board on this? Is this something you want us to pursue, or just uh, should I send the message back to the planning commission that you really aren't interested in a comp? It would take a comprehensive plan change as well as a, a, a zone change. And whether it's just this property or the property is allowed, it's a rule of the road. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I know we brought up a comprehensive plan review a year ago. Uh, I believe Matt recommends that we look at that every 10 years and it's 10, 11 now. I'm not saying we necessarily change the zoning here, but I just, in general, I think the comp plan needs to be looked at. I believe a year ago, when you first came on, you you said that our plan, uh, comp plan was, was a very good one. The comp plan is good, but one thing that I did not realize is there's no uh, land use map. You have to have a land use map uh, as part of a comprehensive plan. So, but essentially what the wording of the, uh, the comprehensive plan says uh, that whatever zoning is currently there, essentially the land use is and densities of that district are, are part of it. So at the very least, we, we should create a, a comprehensive plan land use map um, that is different than the zoning map. Uh, but overall, I think, uh, again, this is the only area that I've seen where we've got a big, um, I don't know if it's a big issue, but, but there is a, a disconnect between um, the actual zoning uh, districts that it in, is in as, and then the, uh, the, way it's, uh, uh, the way it's actually developed. 76 cul-de-sacs right on the line then? Just like shown on the map or? Slightly off the line. Like that. On your side or the other side? My recollection is it's like into the south of my mind. It's a little bit hard to see out there because some of the property owners are on my property. <coughs> um, so there has to be some distinguishment there that's not there at the moment. Part of my problem is I have two different zonings on my sink on my property. That's a, that's a problem. It almost looks as though I know 76, and then there's another one back in the other area. Like when that was developed, it was planned on those sometimes. Those that's, I'm looking at that. I mean, if that's right there by the property line, that was planned to extend that road at some point. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Here. That one there. Yeah. I mean, that's where cul de sac should be, is right on the property line. That way, the developer, when he comes in, he doesn't have to argue right. with the landowner yeah. to extend their road out. So that's what it looks like to me, that, that when that was done, that was intended to be pushed through. Uh, all I was trying to do was to have lot sizes similar to the properties that surround my property. And in order to justify the cost of the road, you know, I need you know, I get about nine lots uh, with uh, two and a half acres, if, if that. And you just can't recoup the cost of the road. There is an abandoned house and trailer house on the property that, you know, is an eyesore. I'd like to clean it up and make it a nice neighborhood, but you have to make it economically work. Would you be able to get permission from the county to come in off of the county roads? I haven't asked, but there is a driveway access there. But typically they have a 300 foot distance between the driveways. Would, would that fit? Would anything like that fit? It's likely it would. Am I wrong in saying that? Usually it's a 300 foot? Yeah, no, you're, you're correct. But one of the things you run into though is if you put a driveway there. If you put the, the, I'd have to look at it, but if you put the road coming in off County Road 1, <coughs> then you may not have enough road frontage for those front lots to be the current ordinances for the off our the road. county road oh. yeah you may have to look at a different design so that the property lines go north and south along instead of 
Eastern Mexico as a design issue. Again, and uh, you know, there was a concern with the planning commission with the way this is designed now. The length of that cul-de-sac is significantly more than it's 2,100 feet as opposed to our allowance for 1,400. Again, an issue for emergency vehicle uh, access. I think we should look at the, I'd move a motion that we have the Planning Commission figure out how this is zoned, if it is R1, if it is R2, and move forward with a comprehensive land plan. Uh, what was the word you were looking for, Scott? Comprehensive yeah. plan uh, uh, amendment. Amendment. Remember the comprehensive plan. So that we can mirror the surrounding neighborhoods. Now there's a motion. Is there a second? Is there a second to that motion? I would second that. The okay, motion has been made and seconded that we send the commission to the planning commission to create a land use amendment to the town plan. The possible so it's, worth, it's just more that we're just looking into it. So we're right. Yeah, we're not approving yeah. anything, just looking into it, which direction to go. Is there any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Yeah. Send that to the Planning Commission. The uh, next one I have is Richard Ryman uh, and Tom du uh, Thomas Duden have made an application for a land split in the northwest quarter of the southeast quarter of Section 8, east of Highway 169. Uh, the land split will consist of two 20-acre lots. Uh, property is zoned uh, AC Agriculture Conservation, and uh, uh, essentially they're creating two parcels, uh, A and B. Uh, one parcel would uh, uh, be sold uh, for development, the other one would uh, uh, exist or continue to exist as a agricultural uh, uh, property. Um, the Planning Commission recommended the land split uh, of these parcels into two 20 acre lots, and uh, there is no requirement for a preliminary or final plot for this. My question, Thomas, is do you need to recruit yourself? I don't think you have I any. Will, yes. You will, yes. Okay. So, yes, the Planning Commission recommended it, and again, pretty straightforward. A land split on these two. My curiosity you would be looking to sell. Yep, this so so right now if you're looking at the paper, it's gonna be the left hand side, uh, the upper the upper line. left hand corner, that's where the Flying Tigers airport is off of County 13 here. Uh, currently we cannot farm it as seen in the pictures. Uh, the DNR made improvements to the road ditch and we're at the head of the ditch. So what took low lying ground made it basically a wetland. So we're actually looking to sell it potentially as a, you should be able to put a building site up on it. On this site? No, on the, on the low side. On, 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 on this corner. Yeah. Upper corner. Yep. Okay. Any? Is there a tile line under that? Mm, yes. But it's not functional? No. It's collapsed? Mm -hmm. That's on the county ditch, the DNR kind of put the ditch through. Yeah, I remember when yeah, it used to be put home. Even this year, you probably couldn't get through it. And we're getting some, but you got a tractor in high gear and you don't dare slow down. Any discussion? Entertain a motion. I entertain a motion to uh, grant the land split for Richard Ryman and Thomas Goodwin. So moved. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded to grant the land split to Richard Ryman and Thomas Goodwin. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. Sustain. Oh, that's going to be on the record. Yeah. Okay, got yep. it. Okay. <clears throat> 
Uh, the next item, uh, Mr. Chair, is the Silver Lake Oaks uh, Development Agreement. Uh, Jason is here tonight, um, and he has worked with the, uh, the township engineer and the engineer from the developer to uh, uh, draft this, and I'll turn it over to you, Jason. If you have any Mr. Chair and the board, you should have the development agreement, and we also have the stormwater maintenance agreement. Um, there really are very few changes. Uh, as Mr. Richards said, I worked with Mr. Winsman and town engineer finalize these documents, these documents. Uh, the only may, only kind of significant change was as far as the acceptance of the road by the town. Um, it, it was originally in there after the two year period. Um, I think after the, the way it was drafted last time was after the two year warranty period, uh, the town could take that on. This provides that after the, after the two year warranty period and at least 50% of the residential lots there being an ish, a certificate, certificate of occupancy issued, uh, the town will take that on as a town road. And I think we had discussed at the last meeting, that's typical language. When you get above that 50% past that warranty period, uh, it makes sense. And it's in the public interest to take that town road, that, that on as a town road. Uh, so that's really the only significant change uh, that was made. Uh, one so, one question ahead. I had in this, just kind of looking everything over. Is that going to be a nine-ton blacktop road? Nine-ton blacktop road that you guys are looking to put in? Yeah, it'll be. Uh, it'll meet the township standards. Okay, we'll that, that that was my thing. Is if, why are we going to sell for it if it doesn't meet the the current standards? So that was one thing I had. But, okay, continue. Sorry. Yeah. So I would, uh, and, and also the uh, Mr. Winsman, Mr. With Mr. John Dell agreed to execute the stormwater maintenance agreement that we talked about last time. Uh, so I would recommend uh, a motion to approve the development agreements and the stormwater maintenance agreement and authorizing uh, Gene to sign that agreement. And one more item at your June meeting, you approved the uh, final plat, and there's a final plat document that has been generated and it's in your packet also. So you might would want to do that as a motion to just to approve the final language of that resolution. Well, then in my back, I didn't get it in there. It was, uh, yeah, it was just put on the, uh, uh, you could pick it off the, uh, your, your computer to me oh. the last couple of weeks. It was no. 25 feet. Yeah, there there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start bringing the damn iPad to this so I can actually read. <laughs> I say it was. A <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a funny by talking, so I thought this was a good watch. You need a formal motion for the boundary line adjustment. Or We've we already done that. <coughs> it's already been taken care of. Yeah. Uh, April meeting. We need to put that. Did you want so to do these in three separate motions, Jason? Or just can they do it all for everything? Can do it all. Because everything is just out to the development agreement, right? Well, I would do maybe do the development agreement and the stormwater maintenance agreement as one, okay. and the final plat resolution as one. And I'll just say, too, hopefully this will serve as a template going forward for development agreements. and. Uh, you know, we'll have something the town will have, we'll be familiar with it, and we'll have something to work off uh, in the future. Is the word going to be out before we get it? Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Just for clarification, so what I read was it. Uh, We'll have the, the base course on for one year for a freeze-thaw cycle. Then the wear will go on, and we won't we wouldn't be accepting the road until after 50% of the homes have been occupancy permits have been granted. Yes. Is that it? Yep. You ready? I would entertain a motion to accept the development agreement. So moved. Motion has been made by Mr. Hiller. Is there a second? I second that. Motion has been made by Mr. Hiller, second by Mr. Whitcomb um, to give a grant to Silver Lake Slopes to the development agreement. Uh, 
Is there any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. We will grant the development agreement. Next item is a stormwater agreement for the same, Silver Lake's Oaks. Is there any discussion or, or motion? So I spoke with Todd on this one today, briefly, Todd and Pauth. So the, there's an opportunity for the homeowners to have an association and they would be, instead of the property owner being responsible for maintaining that drainage area, is it? Homeowners so, would be the property owners. It's, but not the adjacent, it would be the whole, it would be the whole community? No, just a two, if it was between two, two lot lines, it would be those two homeowners. Yeah, it, it is drafted as okay. the developer and then the subsequent property owners. And then it, it gets recorded and it applies to any property owners down the line. Um, any other questions? Uh, hold on one minute, please. Do you, do you plan on making this maybe audible? more impertinent with the last one. Do you plan on doing a homeowners association on this one? No. I don't have any questions, comments? No, we're going to maintain a motion to accept the zone water agreement. Is that a motion that we accept the stormwater agreement for Silver Lake Oaks? Is there a second? And second that. Motion has been made and seconded to <coughs> agree to the stormwater agreement. That's the correct wording. Is there any further discussion? Oh, I, I did find that section in there. I think it was D, D4, Homeowners Association. Developer may, but is not required to establish a homeowners association. Okay. Is there any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of granting a stormwater agreement to Silver Lake Oaks, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. <coughs> <clears throat> and then, Mr. Chair, uh, the town board could act on the uh, resolution language. Uh, again, this you had approved it at your 16th uh, a meeting on, on the June 16th, uh, but we did not have the text of that uh, resolution available at that point. But you would just be approving the, uh, the text of that resolution. So you can just go ahead and sign it. You want that? No, no, no. You did it. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the minute, the wording of the resolution? Granting final approval of the Silver Lake Oaks. In the right path. So moved. Motion has been made. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. And motion has been made and seconded to grant final approval resolution for Silver Lake Oaks. Is there any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion is carried. Uh, Mr. Chair, I've got one last item. It's not on your agenda, but it's a phone call that I received today. Uh, technically, let's pass it down. Uh, it's from Carl uh, Sanford, uh, owns a property, PAD 16004, so it's in section 40302. Uh, uh, it's a property. Uh, just south of 70th Street, County Road 135 on 85th Avenue. Um, it, as you can see, uh, if you look at the blue lines on this aerial photograph, uh, look at the PID numbers, there's two PID numbers, uh, or there's one PID number uh, for two separate parcels. In fact, those parcels are separated by two different other parcels. Uh, he has uh, talked to the county, and uh, the county wants to resolve this also. Um, these lots have been split for some time. Uh, and the county didn't catch the fact that they've got two different PID numbers, or one PID number for two different properties. Uh, but the county said, 
as long as they're having a town board meeting tonight, if the town board doesn't have any objection to them reclassifying one of those parcels as a different PID member, uh, they just want you to, uh, to weigh in on it and just make a motion uh, indicating that uh, you had to, don't have an objection to uh, assigning it a different PID member. You said that was 0302? Yeah, 0302. 0302. <clears throat> both both those parcels don't mind mm -hmm. This was just an error on the county's? I think it's an error on the county's part. This, ha this, this does happen. I've seen this before. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's basically a procedural yeah. Yeah. direction. Yeah. Motion. Yeah. I have to make a motion to split them. The motion has been made to have to split. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second. I'll second that. Second. Okay. I made the motion. John second. Is there any further discussion? There's no further discussion. We'll proceed to vote. All in favor of uh, granting the county make that two separate parcels for Carl Sanford signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. I'm done. You're done? <laughs> okay, old business renew interim use permits for Terry Zortman. This typically is done at, at one year. And if there is no if there are no problems with the, the IUPs, we generally take a one year review off. Um, so, if there's any questions, discussion, or battle about Terry Zortman's Shepherd Chanty? If not, I entertain a motion to accept the interim use permit with the one year review taken off. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Awesome. Motion has been made and seconded by Is there any discussion? And that would include taking off the annual review. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of granting or renewing the IUP for Jeffrey Shanty with the taking off the one year review signified by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Uh, IUP for Kathleen Sokol or insurance sales. Does she need one, to be honest, at the home base? I know why we did them. But do, do we <laughs> she need she did it just so somebody couldn't say, well, because she's on the planning commission, I'm on the town board. Sure. She never has customers come to the house. Yeah. Uh, it's just somebody. Somebody brought up that it, I would move the motion to deny the permit because she doesn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that until I've had a chance to look at it again. I didn't didn't review that particular matter, but uh, can yeah. you look at that and bring that back to the next I can meeting? Because if you don't need it, why in the heck are we making you go through it? Yeah, so I mean it, that's a uh, zone AC up there, isn't it? Yeah, just take yeah, it quickly. Yeah, Uh, yeah, actually, the home occupation business is a listed uh, listed entity. So, home occupation, it's even if she doesn't have customers come to it, uh, there's I guess there is a reason that they did. So, are we going to go around to everybody in the township that's doing Mary Kay? You know, not every municipality townships deal with this all the time, but you've got a lot of people working out there. So, the honest people can get yeah, up. But, I mean, in this day and age, with everything going on with the COVID, yeah, we're going to see a lot more of it. But as long as there's one in the books, uh, I would, I would just, you know, renew it. I move to accept the... the way, um, there's still a motion to oh, sorry. reject it. Yeah. Oh. You withdraw your motion? I would withdraw my motion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is there a motion? Is there any discussion about the granting the interview's permit? It just makes it simpler. I'll remove the motion that we approve the conditional use permit for Catherine Stokel. Is there, is that include the, include it with the, the annual review? Included with the annual review. Is 
there a second? I second that. And I will abstain. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. <coughs> Motion's carried. Mr. Wickham, you have our oh, operational yeah. deficiency. Oh. So I handed this out. L. I just continue to add to this. Um, <clears throat> I kind of started this list just last year, um, asking for policies, looking for policies, and um, they didn't seem to materialize, so I started a list here. Uh, I've got several of them moving uh, forward. Some you'll see work in progress. Some of these are done. Roadside, brush clearing, and mowing. They've got a draft in for today. I also have a draft in for the 911 emergency signs. One that I thought that Dan brought up last week, and I, I would ask him if he'd be willing to take this one on, was uh, the emergency repair of township equipment. You would ask last week to have a policy on when when do we re when do we have to go before the board to. So I just asked if you'd, you'd be willing to take that on and maybe just come up with some sort of draft language that we could all look at and have some sort of a policy for future. I believe the way Livonia Township works is they have an actual committee and then they can just fix it. I mean, if a truck breaks, they don't have to go to board approval or whatever. I mean, they can't just go out and buy a brand new truck, but right. you know, if they blow a tire or whatever, they can just fix it. You know, and their maintenance guy, he actually gets Mark gets a, yeah, I can't remember if it's a monthly or weekly amount. I mean, he's got to keep you know track of what he's spending it on, but you know, he's allowed to spend up to that dollar. Amount. So I mean, I can certainly check to see if they've got anything, see if we can come up with something there. Okay. Uh, and I was just wondering if there's anybody else over the last few months who's thought about some things that you know they've had questions about. Um, you know, hey, what are we doing about this? What I mean, how are we handling these things? And it'd just be nice to be able to step into this and have a one one stop shop on our website. So I'm hoping that our website will start uh, posting these and I don't know if they all consider policies, I'm going to just be operational procedures. Because um, I know Doug gets calls and he can't reach us and it'd be nice to have all these policies in place that if a resident calls about mowing, like when you guys doing your mowing, we have something written up that's just easy for just makes it life easier for everyone. So that's what I have so far. Um, town Hall Building Access was another one I added. Uh, at one point, we were told that the policy was that nobody gets a key to the building. That's kind of changed now. The road supervisor has access to uh, to the, the keypad out back, and we have access to the area where the bathrooms are and those types of things. But if that's something we want to add, that all supervisors have access to the garage. Um, well, I'll look into that too. And that was more or less just to, uh, to cover that. And then also under, it's not part of this list here, and we've already talked about it, it's just the Planning Commission reviewing the comp plan, uh, or the comp map, that type of thing. I didn't have anything else other than that on this topic. Did you have a question? Yes. <clears throat> on the emergency signs? Yes. Didn't we conclude last time, or you guys conclude last time, that that's the, that's the responsibility of the property owner? Yes, but I have some guidance on where that needs to be taken to, which is the county, and I'll have, it's, I've got a, a draft policy, it's, the, it's on part of my road report coming up. Do we have an actual list of who has a key for the building? or, I mean, keypad codes, or when the last time locks have been changed or anything? Yeah, I don't have any documentation of that. I, I don't, well, I can't, I don't know exactly when, but the keys were all switched out in the building within the last year. Okay. And I think there's only three people that have the code for the door. Okay. That would be myself and two maintenance people. And we can change that at any time. I just I, I wasn't sure what the rule on that or how many keys we had floating around out here or anything like that if we had any kind of documentation who's can come and go right. and I'll, I'll put that as the, that second one 
town hall access, building access. So I'll put something up on that too. What I notice on here that we have not addressed is, uh, I know Scott Richards addressed it several months ago, that we used to have staff meetings. Oh, yeah. And it probably would be convenient to have anybody that's coming in with an IUP or CUP and split or whatever, that they would come in and address Mr. Richards Mr. and, and the engineer, uh, whoever would be the pertinent individual with, with Mr. Dahl and, and one of our officers. And I believe those were done the first uh, Thursday of the month. Um, the first or the last? First or the last, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can certainly implement that again. And uh, uh, you know, I, I believe, Doug, you're gone that first week of August, but uh, uh, we'll talk about that. And maybe you know, if we have any anyone who wants to come in and talk in, in August, we'll just do that. It would be helpful for me too to get some face to face before you know we pass all the applications and so on. And I'll just bring up as we're going down, looking at some of these things. I mean, the one with the beaver removal. I mean, it's just things that have come up in the past. With you know, we've got a bill here from a trapper who wants to get paid for a, removing a beaver and never got approval from the town board to pay. So maybe just have a little. If, if there's a property owner that's out there that needs to have a beaver removed because they're blocking a culvert or whatnot, just again, just to keep things. So everybody knows where we're at when I'm getting bills for for, for those types of things. So yeah, that's your problem, Thomas. Yeah, we we got to get rid of that beaver. That's maybe you're like, oh, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Get the DNR on us. <laughs> I think the fact that we're we've done as many of these as we have is is commendable. And a lot of that has to do with Ken Hanson and, and Thomas and and Nick, uh, Bill. That's all I had for the. I'll be. This is old. This is the old business that comes up every so often. If it's okay, just keep the ball rolling, moving on this one. I'm continuing with that. I, I would like to see us authorize renewal of the staff meetings. I think it really, really would have help. I know our meeting thing is, is going really, really quick, but. We well, we still got an hour yet, you just... <laughs> All right, I shouldn't have said anything. <clears throat> I would like to see us authorize uh, staffings again. And I, it probably is in the ordinance, actually, but we just can't adopt it. And I suppose on a lot of these uh, policies that were, again, I don't know if the wording is correct with policy, but I'll have, I don't know, something we need to have Jason look at just to make sure that all of our teams across and I's are dotted to make sure we're not doing anything really out of, out of the ordinary. Just to keep it looking good. Sure. Okay. Anything else? Any other old business? If not, we'll move on to supervisor's report, road report. Okay. I handed this out, so I got an M on the front. <clears throat> so, um, some of this is, is old business. The, the final chip seal, the outcome of last month's meeting that we talked about. So, on uh, last month, Allied had made an error uh, reading the map in the chip seal areas that were crack fill only. They submitted an informal, informal adjusted proposal of 8814, including the post sweep up. I uh, took it before the board here last month, and uh, the board approved a total of 4,500 being that was their mistake. The summary is that we got an extra 10,749 square feet of seal coating and sweep up done for $4,500. Had we paid the same uh, as, as the contractor price, we would have paid an approximately 8,814 for the chip sealing, 1,430 for the sweep up for a total of $10,244. So we had a savings of 5,704 for work that needed to be done at a later date. So that's kind of the bottom line, how we came out on that one. Um, the 911 sign policy and draft, you'll see it's on uh, the third, one, third, third sheet in. I made a few calls to some townships and ended up calling the county. And Mille Lacs County is actually the 911 sign authority for Princeton Township. To, uh, to repress new uh, emergency signs or have an existing sign replaced, that's been damaged. 
we call Malax County Land Services at that phone number. They will have an application for the employee or for the resident to fill out. Um, Malax County sets the pricing for these new sign replacements. Pricing is shown for information only. Well, so that. Okay. So just under your 911 sign policy, I know I talked to Dan about it, um, along with the sign replacement. Fire numbers are virtually non-existent anymore. They're antiques. We don't use them. Oh, the red and white ones. Yeah, yeah those are, are Yeah, red. I don't even know. So be aware of that. So we can pull them. Well, yeah. this isn't part of it at all. I'm no, but I mean, we, we, when, since we're going down, on um, that might be something to put in here that the, the red and white signs are not deemed essential or... Are they even red anymore? I kind of... <laughs> <laughs> they're rusted. Yeah, those are pretty old. Okay, so so if they come in, what you're saying? So, Doug, if somebody comes in wanting a red fire sign, there's no such thing anymore. Everything if, is... If someone a, comes in wanting a blue and white sign, what should that person do? Call Bill. Call... <laughs> <not me. laughs> Well, just so you can let them know too, they'll be dealing with the town, the county, but at least you can give them a little information and say that if it's a brand new sign, it's going to be fifty dollars. They'll they're going to install it. If it's just a replacing a sign like you want, twenty five bucks, and they'll install it. I already ordered mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So that was. Where are they on eBay? <laughs> Amazon. Come on, no Amazon. <laughs> Yeah. So, I got stuck for what was it, 28, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Was it? Okay. For mowing, uh, mowing got started on June 25th. Uh, we had a slight delay for about three weeks due to our employee, um, Steve Flager, had a, had a death in the family. Um, just really something pretty, pretty quick. So it's kind of put him up for a couple of weeks with the COVID. Um, I asked him if I could mention that, so he was okay with that. So a few weeks later, I spoke with Dan. Dan and I brought uh, another qualified candidate that we had previously interviewed on, Dale Henshin. Um, so at this point, he's finished two thirds of the township and should have all of it wrapped up at the end of the month, weather permitting. Uh, with the mowing too, um, I do have extra blades on order just so the board knows. Uh, the blades are getting pretty dull. I went through three different distributors and they've got a couple sets out of Ohio, so we've at least got one full set on hand to replace the ones, and we're going to have one full set as spares and then a handful of loose ends, so if we, we lose some stuff, we've at least got some of the consumables on hand. Thank you. Uh, page 2 of 2, Road Improvement Project on 33rd Street, 82nd Avenue. All of this, of course, is weather permitting. Class, class 5 placement should be all finished this week. Uh, the week of the 26th, paving should be completed, and then they'll finish up with the turf establishment the following week after the bituminous has had a chance to set up a little bit. They don't want to get that equipment out there and start marring it up too soon. So that should all be done here within the next week or two. So go out and have some fresh pavement. Uh, Policy, uh, another one of these ones that I just a draft, uh, the roadside ditch mowing, that would be your, out of order here, but that's fine. The last two we'll just go for. So we've got uh, policy or operational procedure for roadside brushing. Uh, it's a policy of the Princeton Township Board to clear brush 33 feet. And again, these are the things that I need to work with Jason on, make sure. And there might be some boilerplate things out there that I, I can look at. Each uh, 33 feet each side of center line is needed and where feasible. Trees in close proximity to the edge of the pavement typically cause uh, heaving and cracking of uh, pavement due to root and trunk growth. Excess of trees, limbs, and brush and right away may obstruct visibility of street and traffic signs. This is a liability issue. So for our policy, it's the roadside brushing with heavy equipment, front mount skid loader with brush hog will be done. Um, and again, this is all subject to change because I know we have that big boom out there, but um, I've kind of expressed my concerns about that. Uh, we'll be done with that. Uh, when the ground is frozen, while brush is brittle from the cold and the trunks are more easily shattered and before birds start nesting. Other benefits of doing brush removal at this time is that before the uh, plants start to bud, which allows the operator to see any utilities that may be hidden if otherwise uh, left when foliage arrives. 
And then a spot roadside brushing for overhanging limbs and hand tools can be done at any time throughout the year as needed. So I'm welcome to, if somebody wants to come back with some change for these next months, that's fine. And then for our roadside ditch mowing, this is where I could get some input on what the board would like to do on this for sure. It's the policy of the Township Board to mow the first eight feet away from the road surface or from the shoulder if one exists. Um, and what that is saying is on the gravel roads, we don't really have shoulders, but like along Brickton Road, or Baptist Church Road and Brickton Road, we've got the pavement surface, and we typically have a six foot shoulder. So it would be outside of that shoulder would be eight feet that we can mow. Now the only thing I've got about the eight foot, um, that virtually means we're making two passes down with more than we currently have, correct? If, like on, like on Brickton Baptist Church Road, yeah, because the, we got weeds grow right to the pavement. We okay. got an eight foot shoulder, so we okay. have to make two. But there's some there's some places that virtually it's not with the ditches the way they are. Yeah, you right. can only Just make one pass. Yeah, because um, you'll see. Well, we'll get to the next page in a second here. So I don't know if whatever pleases the, the board here. We can mow one time each season. This mowing can take place kind of like we did last year and this year, basically the month of July, and we just mow it once. Uh, or one time each season, this mowing will take place all, all with spot, and then I got an additional spot mowing may be done on higher travel where roads where site distance may be an issue, and spot mowing can be done as needed. We got to do it two times a year. Or two times a year, okay. Yeah, because what's going to happen is if we don't get onto it, the snow is just going to drift. It's going to catch the weeds and okay. the grass, and it is just going to drift. We can get somebody out there late in the year and knock yeah. it down late, before it's late October. Okay. Yeah. Or even so, when the ground is frozen, you can still do it when the ground is frozen. <coughs> so we'll Sometimes it's the, better because you can actually drive on some of that stuff too. Okay, so we'll go to the last one there. Two times each season. First one to take place June, basically the month of June. Because by July, it's getting pretty tall. Mm -hmm. so, but I don't think you can cut till July 1st. You can cut level, uh, but you can't cut below, below the surface of the road. Okay. Before well, July 31st. So if, if, if you had this you like cut top, you can cut eight feet out, but you cannot go below the level of the road. Okay. So if you're running your hay bind or something, you an individual can, but the township cannot. Sure. So what I've attached here on the second two pages are clippings from that. You see there's a DNR website, Roadside for Wildlife. There's a link there. And these are just clippings from there, mowing ditches in the cities, uh, outside the city. This is what kind of team was talking about. Um, I'm not gonna read that all, but I would leave this as part of the um, policy or procedure document. So again, this is something that if the public calls and wants to know, you can just refer them to it, Dale or Doug, and then uh, we'll have that. So those are just draft. <coughs> Bring it up at a later time. And then that's all I had for that. Since I'm next for the fire board, um, that meeting was canceled last month. So uh, that's all I had. The fire board side, we did get a, our truck got delivered. So we have a brand new shiny Pierce and Forrester sitting in there. We've trained on it uh, twice with the officers and salesmen. Uh, we're working on putting gear on it and getting it all set up. Hopefully sometime next month we'll have it out in service. That's all I got on that. That's a tender. <laughs> I say that was a tender. No, that was the new pumper that we got. One well, new pumper. Yeah. Okay, you're bringing that up too. Truck. I wasn't sure who I was bringing that up. Yeah, I'm not sure bringing that up. I'm too early. All right. Um, as far as it goes with purchasing truck, we had talked about maybe buying a brand new truck. Uh, the amount we're going to use it probably not justifiable. Um, I've got an auction coming up. Uh, county brought me in uh, 10 used vehicles. A city brought me in one truck. Uh, Tom came up and looked at the one because it was there. The other one got delivered today. I've got pictures of both of them. It's got a sweet one's got a sweet topper. Yep. yep. There's a 2009 Chevy uh, three-quarter ton uh, extended cab short box pickup truck. It's got 140,000 miles on it. It's got good tires on it. Clean body. Um, I think that's maybe a better route for us to go if we can find a clean used one and save 20 grand. Um, 
as little as we're going to actually use it. I just don't know that it's justifiable to spend 30 grand on a new truck because that's the price I got tentatively on a new through the, through the state bid contract was going to be 29 and change, but I still can't order anything because COVID. So. Looking at a couple of the trucks though, um, some of them had some rust on them. One was a single cab long box, half ton with a five speed. Uh, kind of looked at the three quarter ton. We got to rent a mini excavator. If we got to rent a skid loader, at least we can do some stump removals. We can do some roadside ditch maintenance and we don't have to rely on the rental company or whoever we get or Bogus Brook Township delivering it to us to do our own road work. So. With a three quarter ton, it's kind of the, it, coming from the county, they don't change their oil just because they have to once a year. They do it on a schedule. So I think you got better maintenance records. I do not have records. Oh, you don't? I do not okay. have records. Okay. I asked for that. But I, I think there would be better maintenance than. Typically, yeah. You know. And these aren't problem child trucks that, that they're getting rid of. They're actually, they just bought 14 brand new trucks. They're going to try to get put onto a schedule where every three, four, five years they're rotating out their fleet before they get, you know, wore out. I mean, there's a lot of entities that are going through that right now just because under that state bid, you can buy a truck really, really cheap. So that's why they're going. There's a lot of entities that are going that route. And I would just. What year did you say that three quarter time? There's a 2009 Chevy extended cab short box. And then there's a 2006 Ford F-250 regular cab long box. I'm not a huge fan of the Ford. It's got a 5.4 in it, and I'm not a fan of that motor. That's a ticking time bomb. Mm -hmm. um, so I would personally, I guess I drive a Chevy truck, but I'm not brand specific. They're all great trucks till they break, and they're junk. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe there is a resolution I had uh, Jason Please. go through and type up a resolution in case you guys decided to go that route. We had our ducks turned all in a row. Uh, I'm going to turn the bidding on on Friday this week, and it'll end Tuesday night next week. I know it's a spur of the moment deal, but I didn't find out these were coming until last week. So I know I just as a matter of amount of use we're going to have. I just like to have a better handle on how much. I mean, last year we didn't use a truck at all. This year we're going to be using it. I don't know how much to. Uh, well, I use my personal vehicle um, to remove some signs. Just, I'm just thinking about how many hours we're actually going to be putting on a on a truck for one thing. And I had talked to Kenny. He's got He's got some vehicles that we could possibly like lease or while we're using it, pay it by the. Just some odd. Then we're going to start running into the liability on the insurance end, though, too. You know, if we get our guy in his in a truck and Kenny gets and he gets in an accident. Yeah. So those are just things, some things I just just kind of throwing out there. I but I'm I'm even looking at getting rid of these two big plow trucks out here. Yeah. I mean, this is all I could find on Minbit, but 2001 Internationals and Sterlings like we got out here. Top end, you're looking at 10250, and my guess is that's solid and running. You know, a big international we got. I wouldn't give half of that for it. You know, we got the shop to put the stuff in. It's going to last us a while. And if we put 5,000 miles on, it's probably going to be a lot. I mean, how many times do we go, or you and I drive around on our own looking at roads and finding stuff here and there? I mean, I've drug tires out of ditches already with my own vehicle. and. I don't know. I'm looking at the storms we got last week. You know, I, I would like to see it. Okay, it's already Yeah, I, I just, we got these storms like last week, you know, out on 40th here. I was out there in the morning, there's supposed to be a tree down and They were there. Yeah, somebody got them. Oh, they got them before I got out there, but, um, you know, same thing. If we had a truck run to the township, go grab the kids out of there, cut it up, get it out of the way, and I would like to see it be a township owned piece and with our signs on it. So there's no question if if you're out replacing a sign 
somebody's not going to stop and think you're vandalizing something or you're casing their property or something. It's a, it says Princeton Township in plain lettering. Because I know when I was when I used to go read meters in Elk River, I better have a, something on the side of my vehicle, you know, whether it was my personal vehicle or or company one. It better I better have something that identified me as as Princeton Utility or Elk River Utility. I can see the same thing with the township. So we've got that 90 out there, so we have to decide what we're going to do with that. Because we haven't done anything that's still not licensed or doesn't have its tabs. So we probably don't want to, we don't need two pickups then. I would move the motion to send both plow trucks and the F-150 to auction. Preferably to Wayne Pike, just because everybody out of the picture. <laughs> motion. Well, that's motion that's been made to send the two plow trucks and uh, the pickup to Pike Auction or Hanson Auction Company. Do we want to set a uh, minimum? Is that pretty expensive? Yeah. What's our plan for spot plowing? If we, you know, yeah, if we get a drift and we ain't got no plow truck to take it out, what are we going to do? Well, we've got a contractor. We're supposed to do it. That's what we did last year and worked awesome. Yeah. They, they were, they were down on the spot. They were Worst case, I got two skids and two blades. We got a tractor. Yeah, we got the tractor here too. With a mounted snowblower, which I've never used. Okay. Motion has been made to put two plow trucks and the, the pickup on Pike or a Hanson auction. Is there a second to the motion? Um, I would second that. I just want to go back to the can we set a minimum on that though that we would. How does that like? What do they call that? A hold? You can't do a hold price. Uh, they are going to charge you. Um, I'm not going to charge you guys any commission whatsoever if you send them trucks to me. Whatever they bring, you're going to get a check for. If you want to bring them to Pikes, I have no problem in the world with that. They charge a commission to the seller and to the buyer. I only charge the buyer. Um, if you guys want to put a reserve on it, you could. I don't think there's any reason to do that. I, I they just they are what they are. Okay. Say goodbye to them. Try to find your paperwork on the motor and the, the transmissions. That'll be a huge sell point. I mean, find that documentation. So that made. motion was to for Hanson. Yeah. Motion has been made and seconded to send the two plow trucks and pick up to Hanson Pike Auction. Is there any further discussion on that? How much would it cost? So do we know? I'm personally okay with running it through Hiller. We already have that resolution ready to go. Um, and if you can save the township 500 bucks or whatever it is, uh, I'm okay with going through the killer. The resolution that I drafted is not for this, it's for the purchase of a vehicle. That's no. a little different than what this is. So I can get I, to do a different resolution. Can I speak on that one? Yeah. Nobody's got an auction coming up until September, so you guys got time to think on that one. Pikes do their sale in September, my sale will be in September, so we've got time to work on that one. Would that be an issue if we were to send it to Miller? As long as we do a resolution, um, you know, similar to the one that I drafted for this other purchase, um, you know, just be transparent about it. They have it a record that mm -hmm. that's what the board voted on. That should be an issue. So, and guys, I'm not going to lose any sleep on it. I mean, if you want to send them to Pikes, I have no problem in the world with it. Okay, so I mean, it, it, you're, you're, I'm, I'm not going to lose any sleep on that. <laughs> <laughs> money, that's okay. Good. Is there any further discussion? So we need to make a motion on that resolution. Well, there's some we got a motion on the table. If the motion passes, <coughs> that motion goes. Otherwise, if we the motion is defeated, we can redo it. Is there any further discussion? How do I have to vote on that, Jason? Do I need to abstain right now, or? This motion is to send it to this Pike Hanson, so you don't need to abstain on that. I haven't been seconded yet. 
Yeah, you seconded it. It was seconded. I think it was seconded. But that doesn't require you to vote for it. That's, okay. that's what we all bring it up for discussion, <laughs> right? Yeah. A second, no. a, a second does not motion matter. Guys, yeah. no. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote on the motion to send the two plow trucks and pick up to Pike Hanson Auction. Is all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye? All opposed say no. 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 Motion is defeated. Discussion is now open on you. Both on purchasing and selling trucks at, at auction. Go ahead, Tom. Do it again. I would move the motion to move yeah. to sell the two plow trucks that we have, as well as the pickup uh, on Hiller auction sale on their September auction, as well as set a budget for 15 units. That can be a high end. You don't want to be involved in that. Okay. No, but it, I mean, is that kind of a high end, you think? That would be very high end. You mean a reserve on the. No, 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 on buying. On buying, okay. The, Let's make this separate one. Okay. So, yeah, that would be my motion. Okay, motion has been made to send the two plow trucks and pick up to Hiller Auction for the September auction. Is there a set? A second? Motion has been made and seconded. And this is one, you're just, we have to, I have to prepare a resolution. Okay. I would recommend that you act on this. Don't act on this now, act on this in August. Okay. If it's, if it's okay to go in September. Okay. So. We can move table, uh, table motion. Yeah. I would move a table on motion to the August meeting where we have a resolution in place. Doug, if you could, uh, Maybe we try to find titles, wasn't there a question on if we actually had the title for that portion? Yeah, we've been digging. Yeah. Right. Ladies and Block are really nice, but you got to set up an appointment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah seven, seven to nine weeks out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you give me, give me the VIN number, Don. Yeah. I'll get the VIN numbers and stuff and I'll do some digging. We do have it. Is there a section on the motion? I'll second that motion. Motion has been made to second the stable. Discussion on sending the plow trucks and the pickup to Miller's in September. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of the tabling the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. And should we do the same thing for the for the purchasing or should we? No, purchasing has to be done tonight. And that one there is a resolution that's been prepared. Yep. Okay. Is everybody fine if I'm in the room if you're going to discuss how much money you want to spend on that truck? Or do you want me to step out of the room? I have no problem with it. One other thing, I love the internet. If we're going to discuss how much we're going to be spending on a truck, do we want to have it on the World Wide Web? So if anybody's watching, we want them to mute the tape so that we're not going to get run. That's just, I mean, not to be a conspiracy theorist or whatever, but we do have live audio feed here. If you're going to determine a dollar amount, not saying somebody would, but they could. Dollar amount, five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let it run. Get the truck right there. Uh, no. Hot wheels are more than five bucks now, I can tell you that. If I know you're in here, I'm fine with that. Uh, my uh, motion, or the resolution does not say. Okay. Yeah, it's the, it authorizes the town to purchase a vehicle through Hiller. Okay. Um, and and the, the only real condition on it is that it's, you know, it has to be unanimous vote. Obviously, Dan has to abstain. Um, but that that will be the best price you're going to get, uh, essentially, for you know whatever's purchased. So you guys can put a dollar amount on it, um, whatever the limit is, uh, <clears throat> but that can be a separate issue from the resolution. That's just a conflict of interest resolution that you know, authorizes that to go through here. So our first motion is just the resolution. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, we have a resolution to authorize the township to purchase a used vehicle through Hiller Auction. I would move the motion. Motion has been made. I second that. And seconded to authorize the township to purchase a a truck through Hiller Auction. Is there any further discussion? I'll abstain from that. Okay. Is there any further discussion? If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of authorizing the township to purchase a truck through Hiller Auction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. Uh, we jumped over there. Airport Commission liaison. Uh, basically, the AD building is now open. So we have uh, people cleaning it every morning, or every, every day anyway. We are presently working on developing a manager position, and we have opened the runway. Uh, the main runway has now been rehabbed, and, and the pappies are almost all in place. If anybody needs, electricians need to work on something, they can close it on a per day or per hour basis. Um, we'll move on to new business. Jim? Yeah, uh, were we gonna, this auction that's coming up is this week. So were we gonna- That's this week? It's a week from tonight. So <laughs> we need to, how are we gonna decide on what the <coughs> budget? Is the truck there? Yep. Tom's been there. But the, well, we're looking at like six or seven of them, right? Nope. Oh. Just got narrowed down. Just one. Got narrowed down. Chevy 2012. Okay. 2009. 2009. Okay. So we didn't have a number made public. Perhaps we can have a committee of two. Do see the judge? Write it on a piece of paper. Can we have to say can write it on a piece of paper? Yeah. Why not just say common sense? What's that? Why not just say common sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know what stuff is worth. That's a rash assumption. <laughs> well, that, well, the resolution yeah. stated it at best price or whatever. Yeah. So if yeah. him and I use our better judgment, do some research online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, because it, it, that's, that's what it needs to be, uh, you know, the best value that the town can get. So okay. that would be fine. Okay. So we want to get a patent. I believe you two were put in charge of, of truck hope you know dealings, more or less. So, uh, <laughs> what's that? I said, I hope he knows how to bid online. <laughs> <laughs> I just put the number in and I'll walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we need anything else? You two will. I, I think I know. I think I can trust that you guys are know way more about it than than those of us that haven't looked at the truck. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention that uh, that that truck does have a plow it's already, so that will have to go to that does 1994. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to. Oh. I believe next item of business, new business, we can return the parasol uh, escrow to the Price Custom Homes. Yeah, uh, <coughs> Price Custom Home, Custom Homes put in a $5,000 escrow on a uh, septic project for the parasol home. I have the uh, the certificate of compliance from the county on that, so uh, that should resolve that issue so that we should be in, able to return their um, escrow and I'm just looking for a, a motion to approve that. I'll make that motion. Motion has been made to return parasol escrow, escrow to Price Custom Holes. Is there a second? Second that. Motion has been made and seconded to return the parasol escrow to Price Custom Holes. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> if there is no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. 
table for do we need to discuss the preparing the plan? Yeah, I mean the township is required to adopt. We are, we are required yeah. to. Okay, we have paperwork required by the state. I, I think that's I think that's the recommendation that Matt has put on as well, because I know uh, Steve Fenske circulated a draft plan to you know some of us who work for, you know work all the time with townships. Uh, I haven't looked at I don't know if you guys have looked on one or put one together or not. Um, but there is that in place. Have you looked at this one? Have you looked at yeah. this one? Yeah, there was one in the packet last month. Well, it changes every week, so how are we going to really prepare it for the moving target? <laughs> So we just need to approve these as our preparedness plan, or we got to, I mean, this is stuff that Matt actually sent out? Or? These yeah. are, these are um, templates that Matt um, put out. What, what I would probably suggest is that you appoint a subcommittee to, because these aren't final drafts. These are just templates. And a subcommittee to draft um, to, to complete the draft and then bring it forward the next meeting. I'd like to nominate John and uh, Thomas for that subcommittee. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Did I hear a train? <laughs> Is this something, Jason, you can take care of? Or, I mean, I. Uh, is this something that the township, uh, the board itself, has to do, or is this something? Yeah, I mean, th there are sections in there that you know require <coughs> input from the town board as far as what they want, you know, the policy to be on certain things. So, I think this if you have a couple people that you kind of assign to work on it, they, I can work with them, um, you know, just to make sure we get everything in there that has to be in there. And then, you know, just kind of put it forward. Uh, you know, my nomination. Did this the part where I accept the nomination? <laughs> 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 well, well, I'll second the nomination. He's anxious to accept this. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll uh, see to create a subcommittee of Thomas and John. To work on the preparedness plan. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. This is where you spell out, John. What's that? So this is where you say aye, John. I <laughs> said aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs> Passed. Okay, next item city annexation. Who seconded that? I did. City annexation. Um, <clears throat> Do we, Mr. Barbian, as the city administrator? Sure, I'd be happy to make a couple of comments. Yes, please. Acceptable to the town board. Um, I handed your Mr. Richards a copy of the survey. I uh, have a few of them. I'll just hand them to you so you have. Is that just for the fire station? Yeah. Yeah, I have one last You have one? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Here, I have one more. I've seen it enough times. <laughs> um, so what I handed out was a map that shows a 1.9 acre piece of property that is uh, just behind, just to the west of the public safety building. And the city is looking to add a storage unit behind that building um, rather than on the street. Basically behind that building is probably a better use of real estate because you don't waste your sewer water and road, so that's why they're looking to put it behind the property. And we'll uh, talk to uh, the owners of the property about uh, annexing that property, and then we would attach it to the public safety building. And following up with the state, it's a pretty common practice for parts of parcels to be annexed. That's what we would be doing in this particular case. It's my understanding that we couldn't really separate it into a parcel under town subdivision ordinance because there is no road frontage, of course. 
and uh, it would meet the two and a half acre minimum lot size. So uh, my first discussion with the county supported exactly doing this route, and then the follow-up that I had today with the state indicated parts of parcel was common to be annexed and then attached to, and then what we would do is then attach it to the uh, to the existing parcel. So I'm, I'm quite sure I believe that this follows the procedures that need to be done. There's one thing that we haven't determined yet, and that's because we have to give you a, 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 a proportional tax amount to the township. I think it's for two years, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure exactly. We haven't been able to figure that amount. It's somewhere between 30 and $50, whatever it is it is, and then just pay it as needed when needed. So about 30 or 50,000 or? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. <laughs> 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 it basically reimburses us for, for our share of the um, personal or real estate tax for, it actually go, usually is broke down 50% first year, 40, 30, 20, and 10. So over a five year period. And I think if we figured it out right, it probably wouldn't pay for the cost of the paper to print the check. But it, so, well, we'll have to figure out the best we can. I think the county actually calculates that and we'll have that done. Yeah, probably pay it all once, so don't have to take so long. <laughs> Write so many checks. But I, I think that's pretty much it. I, I don't even know if the town needs to act on it, but certainly it'd probably be fine if you could weigh in if there's not any objections to that. If you people understand what portion they're looking at, it's, it's basically blow sand behind the fire hall. And it's being used for absolutely nothing right now. Uh, it's, it's just a wasteland. Um, there's nothing on it, it's bare land. Uh, I think years ago, uh, Mr. Marshall, I believe, grazed his sheep on that area. But he hasn't had sheep there for some years, if I remember right. So it's just been growing up in weeds. It's not doing anybody any good. If they can put a storage building, I think it'd be a plus for the city. So, Bob, just so that we understand, um, you would uh, go through the annexation first and then just combine that parcel, because it's now part of the city, uh, to the to the Jason parcel. So sure. the township doesn't have to do anything. That's my understanding. That seems cleaner to me, actually. Jason and I kind of talked about it. Yeah. It seems it's cleaner to us. So. There's no action we need to do. It's more of a heads up. Do you think they need to weigh in on it? This is just a break. I don't want the station, though. Yeah. Right? It's not going all because. No, I. If you went out to the station, you'd take it. Yeah, like you say, they can't. It's, it's just that. Lots of they, they can make a motion and say they support the organization. I don't want to put the chunk right here. <laughs> 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 It, it's about a 6,000 square foot building and it's going to be used for police and fire. And then the site is a little bit larger because uh, because there's a dog training park on the airport. That would eventually need to have a You guys aren't funding the police? You're not funding the police like all the cool people? This little portion here. I just want to make sure that it works just Anyway. That's what I want to do. You are going to be to get up there. Just a point of it or information. Thank you. Yeah, I guess, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, Richard. No, Richard. Yeah, it's not Richard. Yeah. Mentioned that perhaps a motion of support could be issued or something to that effect. Were you going to get any better deal on fire coverage? I'm going to get that. Wait a second, let me cover that off. I'm going to get that more than that. I'm going to get that more than Would you run the sirens too for us? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> so, you want a formal motion in support of that? or? I don't think it hurts. I don't know, Jason. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, it's entirely up to you guys. It, it, it doesn't hurt. hurt. It doesn't hurt. I will move that we show support for the city at annexing that 1.97 acres of property and move it into the city for a uh, auxiliary storage building for the fire department. I'd second that. The motion has been made and seconded to um, support the city annexation. 
1.907 acres of land. Is there any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of the motion to support city annexation, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion is carried. Thank you. Sorry for keeping the, the one's the end. Okay, it feels like home. It feels like our meetings. <laughs> the next time of business is a. We had some discussion about historical accuracy of resolution 2019 3. Yes, probably my point or my place to, to eat some crow and take some blame. Next item and last April 16th. The item of the Federal Business of Resolution 2019 authorizing contract with interested officer for Township to do repair work to Anderson Auto. Tom doing a motion to approve Resolution 2019-3. Eugene Stokes is second in the motion. Dave Persing and Bill Whitcomb did not vote. Bill Whitcomb stated that he was abstaining from the vote. Adam Ripple stated abstinence is no, no vote if the individual is present. Motion failed for lack of unanimous vote. Mr. Ripple and I discussed that afterwards. We cited two different places in parliamentary law. I took the, I think, believe the wrong road, but in, in retrospect, I don't think we can do anything about it. At the May 21st meeting, I stated that in regards to the misunderstanding regarding a vote at the last meeting, the vote was two in favor to allow the resolution for Mr. Anderson to provide services. Since to abstain, the vote was unanimous, so the resolution passed. I then signed the resolution. Uh, Mr. Anderson did some work. In the June meeting, we approved the minutes, so I believe that kind of binds us to my declaration, even though it may have been an error. It was an error, but I don't think there's anything we can do about it. Uh, resolution 2019-3 is expired, so um, it's over and done with. But <coughs> Jason, is that true that a apps Abstaining vote is considered a no vote. That's the first I've ever heard of that one. I always thought it was a no vote is a yes vote. <laughs> it's it. In, the, in uh, parliamentary law, there are two different ways to look at it. One is it can be considered a a no vote if it's if it requires a like a, in a resolution or like a pro proposition on a ballot. If people let's say 500 people vote, 200 vote for and 100 vote against. 200 people don't vote yes or no. The 200 people that did not vote come against the proposition, so it, it's defeated. That's one of the rare cases where parliamentary law gets a little bit jumbled, and I took the wrong road, I believe. <coughs> no, so it, was I, my, it was my error. I guess I'm questioning that word uh, on that, and then also where was it you or Dave that did not vote? How does a person that does not vote during well, how does that get recorded? I mean, that's, well, I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't, I mean, and I'm just questioning this, I'm not showing your ass or anything, but if, if Dave did not vote, should you have not, as the chairman said, hey, you have to vote either yay or nay? I, I don't know. Well, the problem with, I've, I've got the meeting recorded. The problem was, is that the absent, when I abstained, there was discussion, and at that point, they said that, well, an abst and abstain is a no vote and it dropped there. Dave didn't even have an option because we just kind of moved right on to the next item without even giving him an opportunity to speak because we just thought the resolution had, had failed. And we went on. And then the other discussion came after the meeting was over between Gene and Mr. Ripple. So that's, that's kind of where the confusion lies is that uh, there was not a lot of discussion after the abstain vote was in there. Uh, it was two yeses, and we just kind of sat there, and we thought it passed. I mean, I can play the recording if you want to hear it, but um, we just moved on from there. So, and, and, and I was the one who brought this before the meeting tonight because I was trying to go through things that we need to get on the website, and resolutions is one of them, and this one struck me as kind of funny, like, wait a minute, I don't remember this one passing, and uh, and he... Uh, Gene has read kind of what happened. Uh, again, just from my from my recollection, my recollection, that second page on May 22nd, that picture that handed out there. 
uh, we were approving minutes from the prior meeting and I was looking on to the next, <laughs> the, the next line after I had highlighted in pink there. You maybe don't see the pink, but the third, the third one. So I didn't even realize that Gene was talking about that and it doesn't, it was never brought up what resolution was being discussed. It just says the resolution at the last meeting. So uh, I, didn't, I didn't catch that. And then in, in a meeting later in the year, we were discussing uh, compensation and it was, it was brought up uh, that uh, Craig Anderson had never received any payments. And uh, I said that, that the resolution was out there and I was, was asking for $110 and I averaged, I, I said $1,200. I'm just trying to clear up some, some history here just so people understand what's going on. So <clears throat> I was under the impression when I made those statements that it did, had not passed. I, I didn't even realize until this last week that it actually was reversed to the next meeting because I don't recall even seeing this. And then my discussion with it, that I had said at the meeting also was that he was asking for $110 my mistake, I apologize, it was $100, not 110 And then the third page shows where I came up with that calculation of what I thought the average was of $1,200. Because I just got done going through the whole road program, the whole road budget, looking at everything. And so these were the four charges throughout the years. So if you take those total charges over 30 months, 104 a month, the average was the $1,200. So that's where I came up with the $1,200 that I thought was charged in the previous years, so it was a misunderstanding. I just spoke on uh, one hundred and ten dollars versus one hundred dollars, and so that's just where we're just trying to clear this up. It sounds as though because we approved the minutes the following month, reversing what we thought was what we thought was the approved resolution, uh, it didn't get caught, and it evidently, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong. If we have minutes that were approved. We can't necessarily go back and reverse that. And it doesn't matter, it's a year ago. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I have a hard time following. So there, there was, a, after the meeting after this, you already reversed that resolution? No, the, re oh. the resolution stood through into the next month until it was stated that evidently the F's, the F's. So what you're seeing on that first page, that's what we left the meeting thinking, thought, thought happening. Mm -hmm. All the way until the next meeting month. Until the next month. Yeah, where you where it's marked. Where it's in orange there. In orange. Yeah, after there's some ambiguities in, in Robert's rules and and uh just code and and Mr. Ripple and I had some discussion about it and I said a a non vote goes to the prevailing side which is typical for just like if you have a motion to accept the minutes, if only one person says aye, the other people, the assumption is that they, just, they don't care enough to vote or whatever. But when it, after I talked to Mr. Ripple, the next month I came back and said, in regards to the misunderstanding regarding the vote at the last meeting, the vote was two to zero, which basically was a uh, unanimous vote but I was not taking into consideration. So I, it was my error, my error, but I did sign the resolution. Mr. Anderson has the resolution in hand. So I, I, I think it's over and done. But it was, it was, it was my error in, in um, overruling the original decision. Let me let me take a look at it. Let me just be very clear here. There were five people there that night. Mr. Anderson did not vote because he was. Uh, um, oh, was the okay. Witnesses. So there were four four, four possible voters. Um, and Dave Persing didn't vote. He didn't get a chance. He did not vote. Yeah, but it was going down the line. I oh, we just had a boys vote and there were only two. Yeah, there's only two. So and two of us didn't vote. And then the question was, well, are you not voting and I, or are you abstaining? And I said, I'm abstaining. And then the I discussion. believe that was after I announced that the vote was in favor of the, of the resolution. And then you said, well, you abstained. 
And then, and oh, then, okay. and then Mr. Ripple said, "Well, an abstain is no, or would stand as no, so it's defeated." After the meeting, he and I talked, and and we kind of decided two different places and, and stirred his toes. But then, and the following month, you also talked. Eugene Stokel stated that in regards to the misunderstanding regarding your vote at the last meeting. The vote was two in favor to allow the resolution for Mr. Anderson to provide services, and since two abstained, the vote was unanimous, so the, res the resolution passed. Right, and then I signed a resolution. Correct. So the problem was is that we didn't catch this the following meeting on the minutes. It was only one abstention, which is either way, and Dave never voted. <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let me let me just. I, I don't think it's going to be an issue. With let me take a look at it, just to make sure. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, well, you, you guys use Roberts or what? Well, we we decided to serve the standard code because it's a little bit easier to understand. Okay. Uh, serve the standard code for only three months. Yeah, I'll take a look, at, a look at that. I'm more familiar. I'm not hey. abundantly. I don't know word for word, but I'm more familiar with Roberts and Sturgis. Uh, but let me just take a quick look at it, and we'll take we'll take it on. Is there any other? I have one other, two other items of business yet. Um, to be very quick, uh, at the long siding car show. Uh, apparently they use, they had overflow parking, they used the town hall parking area, and they also parked on both sides of the street down here. There would have been no way uh, emergency vehicles could have got through at times. This, this I barely thing. got through the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> so if, in the future, when they request something, they'll have to probably have signs up that parking only one side of the street is on. No parking, uh, you know, it can be temporary signs. I I just heard that today, and then they were concerned about when people are drinking over there and then come over here and get a vehicle in in the town parking lot. Could the township be liable for for anything? And it was just a just a question. I think about well, that they're recycling their bottles. What's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and then they also were, were blocking off the entrance to the, to the dump. Can they them. park in the RCI? Being responsible. <laughs> they, they parked on either side of the road all the way down there, too. I mean, it was so just really good. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's something that maybe in the past, if you just need to give them on, on, their, on their permit that they have to put up signs for one side of the road. race track to them. They know you guys didn't get through your If you can't get through with a piece of equipment, well, I actually I sent them the layers with the disc because it got sent to me yeah. through the group. And yeah. Okay, that, then I have one other thing. Um, I have, in the past, well, sometime I made a comment that it would require a $600,000 home before it would be an advantage. I had a long talk with, with the county assessor and, and one of his people. Uh, since 2009, we've had no increase in our levy. The county valuation, this is the estimated market value, went from $2,137,524,500 in 44 cents <laughs> to, to $2,386,181,600 by 2009. Approximately a 20% increase. The township went from $175,452,900 to $219,709,000. They say $219,709,000. Yeah. And since then, our township real estate tax is basically the same. If you look at your real estate tax, your total, um, if you have a $300,000 home, you're probably using somewhere around $300. It's actually for your township. The rest of it's going somewhere else. Town, uh, county and the school mostly. Our percent of the re total real estate tax went from about 16% to 13.3% in that 11 year period. The total 
valuation went up 23%, the total real estate tax went up 23%. So there's, by increasing our taxable market value by developing and new homes, the township real estate tax will change by mere pennies. The county and school increase more than makes up for that by more services by county, such as social services, policing, and so on, and the school. According to the assessor's office, and this was directly from them, my statement that a home would have to be over 500000 or 600000 to help township taxes under, understated the results, there is never an advantage in development. The only time we could benefit would be from commercial industrial development because they are taxed at a much higher rate and they do not require as much service. That, I know you, I have been asked several months in a row to respond to that. That's the answer I got from sitting down with, with the mm -hmm. county assessor. It still doesn't tell us, Gene, if it costs, if a house pays $300 taxes, how much money does the township spend on services for that house? That's the point. But it doesn't make any, any difference because whatever we owe and whatever we can gain is going to get lost by the, the county and, and school is going to more than make up for it. But we don't lose money. We don't lose money. We're house. not going to gain any, you're not going to gain anything in your taxes by having more houses around you. According to the assessor's office. But Even if you got a million dollar home. If you got 10 more houses, then the township gets $3,000 more in more tax money. But if you get $300 per house for township taxes, it's still going to end up being the same percent. What? We're still going to end up about 13%. Isn't it based on the levy? So, it's based on, the, and our levy hasn't changed in one year. Correct. So the only way that this would, the only thing additional houses do for our township tax is it actually lowers each individual property owner's tax percentage that they have to pay in. It doesn't necessarily affect county, state, school, blah, 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 but our pie is set. So if you have one person paying in that has, the bill is $100, they're paying the full $100. If you have 10 people paying towards that bill, they're each paying 10. So the only thing additional houses do would be to reduce the percentage that each individual is paying because the levy is set, the bill is set. Well, the numbers, the increase in the estimated market value in the township was 23%. The increase in tax per our, from our township went up 23%. Your individual taxes went up 23%. For the county? The, it went up exactly the same amount as the school. estimated market value. And that means that all those extra houses that were put in didn't change your your percent or your, your taxable value. It went from 16 to 13. What's that? It went from 16% to 13%. That's not very much. That's what, like the MAT laughed at us when we said we haven't raised our levy in, thir in 13 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said we gave up 20% of our purchase fund. Exactly. But it's, it's never going to be an advantage to the township, to a resident. And I talked to the, to the assessor's office for probably an hour and a half, and I was up there twice, and, and they they said the same thing. They said it will never be an advantage to the to the township residents to where I have more, more houses. But if you were to put commercial developments in, because a house is, is one, point, one valuation, a commercial is one and a half up to a certain number of dollars, and then it goes to two, two percent after one after quarter million. So that's where the, your increase or your, your advantage is gonna come. Got lots of commercial land not being used. That's, that's what came from the assessor's office. Uh, just for your township board members, uh, Wednesday, August 19th, that uh, there's a Zoom meeting for township officers. Is that uh, an hour long one? What's that? Is it one hour? No, this is a an evening meeting, 7 p.m. Um, you'll have attorneys, you'll have the MAT, 
Um, there, I just got this, I believe it's today or yesterday. You'll probably be getting it. No, you won't be getting it because they said they only sent it out to the to the chairs and the and the clerk. Is there any further discussion? Any further business to come before the board? Yes. I'd like Mr. Hill to go over his findings. I was sent out to everybody at the last minute, or last minute, otherwise I would have had it on the agenda. Sure. Um, I presented the yeah. board. Uh, you should have a memorandum with regard to the review of the uh, computer imaging and then just kind of review in general of the former town clerk uh, and some of those processes. I think, you know, I concluded uh, early on and then kind of detailed kind of what I reviewed and, uh, you know, kind of summarized everything. But ultimately, my conclusion was that the town was justified to look into these things. Uh, they were advised by Carney. They were advised by a uh, town attorney at one point when asked about proceeding with one of these items. Uh, the independent auditor uh, confirmed that you know, it was a good exercise of due diligence and your obligation and your fiduciary duty to conduct that audit just with the changeover of a, of a clerk uh, and talking about having a, you know, a record of what was there before, a clean slate for the new town clerk, those types of things. Um, I reviewed the com computer forensics report I reviewed information that Ms. Wubin had provided, uh, letters that she had sent to the town board. Uh, I reviewed the independent auditor's report and the video recording of the May 2020 meeting uh, with this board to discuss the audit. I went back and review, reviewed video recordings of the town board meetings in August, September, October, and November of 2019 to review uh, what decisions were made at that time and what the discussion was, and then communications with Steve Finsky of the Minnesota Association of Townships. Um, we I talked about this a little bit the last time, uh, the computer review, uh, one of the items, well, the item that, that kind of was reviewed uh, after, that Im after that imaging was the potential of missing emails, the use of cloud storage, and the use of external hard drives. Uh, those are indeed red flags. Uh, however, uh, we met with uh, Connie here and went through files. There's you know, file cabinets and multiple files in there that showed uh, some printed off emails. Uh, you know, would, it would take a significant amount of time to go through every email and every file in there. Uh, but we looked at it, I looked at it with her. There were emails in there for these various different files. She conceded that she did delete some emails that weren't township related or emails that were, uh, you know, not of any particular significance, scheduling or things like that. Uh, but the otherwise that you know there are emails in there that kind of support that. Uh, she denies any knowledge of using cloud storage, uh, or and she states that she left the flash drive here at the town hall. Um, the issue that I discuss in here with regard to the flash drive, and then also the security cameras that were in there, uh, there has just been there was too much passage of time. Uh, too many people uh, in there uh, that had access to the computer, even before the computer was sent off to be forensically imaged. Uh, you know, there were people that had access to the computer. So there's really no way to say with any degree of certainty, uh, you know, to kind of pin any of those things down. And the other issue is with the, when we went in there, the security cameras that were there, uh, there's different opinions on when those were turned off or whether they were turned off. But we know now they're not there, um, and nobody. We don't know where they are. Uh, and the my understanding is that the video that was taken would record onto hardware, not onto the computer that was there. So we don't have access to any of that data. We don't know where that equipment is. Uh, so again, it's one of those things where we can't make any hard conclusions or hard decisions based uh, based upon mm -hmm. that. Um, as I mentioned, the independent auditor's report, uh, which I think to me is of the most significance and uh, for the town board as far as what their fiduciary obligation is and what their responsibilities are. Uh, the independent auditor uh, reviewed 
specific transactions. I reviewed uh, you know, a number of specific items that the board had put together that they wanted the auditor to look at for 2019 and some other issues as well. The auditor found no irregularities or irreconcilable items. Um, after updates with regard to categorization and coding, uh, transactions and rec reconciliations were accurate. I think there's been some discussion of that today too about you know, just making sure things are coded properly so we know where exactly everything is. Uh, revenue was properly coded and accurate. The selected transactions that were reviewed were accounted for and then there were some that were finalized uh, at the, at the uh, discussion at our June meeting. Uh, so it's my understanding that all those specific transactions have been accounted for. Um, Mr. Wishman, Steve Wishman of Bergen at that meeting had identified himself as a certified fraud examinator, noted no evidence indicating intentional destruction of records or improper activity. Uh, he noted that upon the change of a clerk or treasurer, it was a best practice and prudent of the town board to conduct that audit. Uh, and it was important of the town's, important part of the town's due diligence and fiduciary duty. And this was actually confirmed in writing if you look at the meeting uh, there was a letter that was provided before the audit was even started uh, that basically stated the same thing. So that's what I get into at the end of the, you know, my memorandum was, you know, I think there's there was sufficient justification here to look at these things. Given the history, uh, given kind of the sudden changeover, uh, as far as the town board is concerned, uh, there was a justification and probably an obligation to look at these things. Um, that was done, you know, based on what we have so far, there's nothing to support, you know, there's a, there's a statute that if the town board or an individual officer finds out about financial irregularities, they need to report that to the county sheriff and to the state auditor. Uh, there's nothing here, like the auditor said, and what we've seen and what we've been able to look at so far, there's nothing to indicate anything that the town has to report so it's, you know, I know there's been a lot of discussion of this and there's been a lot of you know, angst over it. But what I wanted to emphasize in here was it was appropriate to look at this stuff. We haven't found anything. So at this point, I don't think there's anything further we need to do or to look at. And, you know, hopefully we can you know, get some of these coding things right, you know, make sure we get better processes in place, and, you know, I think we'll be fine. One question. Sure. So you said there's a lot of people who had access to the computer. Who, who, who are those people? Uh, there was a deputy clerk. Who? Jeanette. Jeanette. Um, that had access, did that access it? I think she did. I think that's what Connie had said, that there was somebody else who had did they verif did, did, was that verified? I haven't spoken to her. Okay. But it, it the I know that there was discussion at one of the meetings about you know that computer wasn't sent out to be imaged until October, um, and I think it was used. I, think, I mean, it's established that it was used in that during that time, and as far as some of the other property and things in there as far as flash drives or security cameras or anything like that. It's not, it may not have been somebody who had access to the computer, but who had access just to the office. The office. Well, that kind of goes back to my question that I wanted to ask earlier. Do we have accurate accounting of where the hell all the keys for our building are? I mean, that that is a very good start. And the other thing looking forward, um, you know, hopefully you never have to deal with this issue again. God, I hope not. But I would be, I would, you know, be a little more proactive, uh, you know, if the circumstances are similar. Normally if you have a clerk changeover, you know, you have a deputy clerk in place, that person is trained up, ready to go as soon as the transition has happened. Uh, I would recommend you get a deputy clerk, and that's uh, Doug's responsibility. And if anything like this happens again, uh, I can tell you from my litigation days, I would advise the town to immediately lock down all this stuff. You know, if you're going to do it, because if you're going to do it in imaging, 
you know, lock down all that stuff, get it done, do what you do what you need to do. Uh, you know, we can talk about that uh, for the future, but I certainly would, you know, there should be some kind of inventory of who has access to what. Questions? Any other discussion or business come before the meeting? Can I ask a quick question? We're actually from Wyandette Township. Yeah, we're looking to, a group of our neighbors are looking to asphalt the road that would come out onto Jarvis Street, County Line. And Wyandette Township is saying that you guys have talked about pulling the asphalt up and putting it back to gravel. I was just curious if there's any. I don't, I don't believe that's part of where uh, right north of 95 up far to where it ends. Like one mile. It's like yeah. 40th Street and then it turns into 349th. That's gravel. Yeah. We are looking to tar some of 349th connected to 40th Street. Um, and they had mentioned that there was some discussion at some point during your meetings that you might grind it up and turn Jarvis back to gravel. You heard that same rumor, Scott? I heard it, but I'm not in favor of it. No, I've heard the same rumor too, and I live on 50th or Jarvis. And oh, okay. I think that rumor was not with this board. Okay. okay. I thought they were trying to scare us with that. It doesn't seem like they want us to cover it. So. <laughs> that was the old, what do we call the old board? Okay. So this board doesn't. I was, just, I was just out there. In fact, I'm taking counts on it as we speak. I, I did, I don't know if you saw the, the meter, yep. right, end kind of the north of 95. So I've got some numbers there, and you're you're well within the threshold of what most people would say would require pavement. Oh, okay. I would. Only if your house is valued at six hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're yeah. I mean, but I can't speak for the board. I mean, I'm just uh, yeah. yeah. You're you're well with. You're, and you got a lot of stuff going on. Why not? There's a development to the east. Yeah, right. Yeah. Forty-eighth. I can't. So, which side of the road are you guys on? Oh well, if you take on, on the north side, on three hundred forty-nine. If you go down Jarvis, you take a right. Where yours is fortieth, but if you take a right, it's three hundred forty-nine. Oh. Well, yeah, you take a right on fortieth, and then fortieth ends pavement and turns into three hundred and forty-nine. That's a common line. Okay. So we're on the north side of three hundred and forty-nine. There's a little development south of you. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Fortieth. Fortieth. Fortieth Street. Or the street. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's cool. Thanks, guys. Right, yeah. You're not going to know you're not rip it off before we put $130,000 yeah. in the entire road. People are getting bent well, on the board in three years. Our road plans does not no. need tearing up any, any asphalt. It's okay. repairing, but not, not tearing down. Thank you. Any other questions? Before the meeting. Thank you. I drove over and drove count things as many times as I could. Motion was adjourned. And second, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carried. We are adjourned. Thank you.